sweating on this one. Now this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Now we're running around doing odd jobs, but I'm going to tell you how much I charge for each job. Let's get into it, let's take a look at the first one. First job we got is this basin. You can see there the customers trying to get it out and pushed it down even further. So I'm just going to get that out, put a new one in, because obviously there's a problem with it. Put a new one in for how much the cost, so I've just got the drawer out. What I'm going to do is get this off and uh Put a new one in, you can see the view silicon and that. We don't use silicon. I'll show you what we use, it's a lot better. So I've just got the plum tub down there. They look like worth having them on plum tubs. Just gonna undo that, undo that, undo the top knot, undo the bottom knot, and that'll just come out. Just undo that nut. Obviously, I can't do it one handed, but you can, what you do is hold that thread and undo that nut. And you can see it's all spinning, so I need two hands for this. So I'm just going to take that nut off and all that will just come out. Undo that nut's off, and I'll just pull out. There we go. That is done. I have to get that a good clean first. And you see, they've used silicon to seal it, which I don't like doing. So just going to clean all that out and we can start fitting a new one. It's clean now, I've got all the silicon off and I'll show you what we're going to use to seal it up. We use these, Dudley Basin Waste, really good, cost about £2.50 um, and well worth it though. You'll see the rub back. Oh, get it off man. Look how big that is. That's the difference between the two. That seal. We've never had a problem with that. We don't put no silicone, just, just that, and that will seal perfect. So, we've got the seal on there. Just going to slot that through. we we'll put our base and mate on. So, it's slotted waste. I want to make sure that there's one there. We've got, so we've got the seal on. Pop that in. There we go. Then we can get our base and mate on there. The base and mate goes on. Then that collar. And you get your nut on and compress that into there. Got ourselves a new uh, basin waste fitting box spanner. That is from today's tools. Um, got it off direct plumbing supplies. Um, yeah, we're gonna give that a try. So I was just using my grips before, but you now fit nicely and make my life a little bit easier. Let me tighten that up. You can see how it's compressing in. Because it leaks on the thread. A lot of people just smash a lot of silicon in there. All plumbers, mate. We don't. We use these. I never had a leak on them. They're really good. Now you can stick your screwdriver through there just to get a bit more on it. So we're going to need two hands for that, but we're just going to get in by hand and then tighten it up. There you go. That's all tightened in. Sandwich compressed up. That'll be sealed right in there now. So we can get our. Where is he? Right in there. We get our trap back on, give that a test. That's a telescopic trap, so what you can do is undo that nut and that will slide up and down. So get your back nut on, slide it up, and you get that nut on. Tighten that one in, then you tighten the bottom one. Makes life a bit easier. There we go, right, let's give that a try. So far, so good. Let me test the oil flow. Get that filled water to the oil flow. Make sure that works okay. Make sure that I ain't blocked up. Still looking good. Let's just try a big sink full basin. Sorry. The black ones you call them sinks. Up or downstairs, them sinks. So let's just pop that. Looks fine. A lot of people say with them basin mates, you can't get the compressed enough get this nut on, but look at the gap I've got there. Plenty of room, I've never had a problem with them. I'm gonna say they've always sealed. 
There we go. That's job done. See, that's what happened to the old one. The customers tried to, you can see the scratch marks, tried to get it back out, but it's pushed completely down there. We probably could have pushed that back out and repaired it, but it's still the same labour charge, so I mean, they'll cost about 10, 15 quid. Yeah, just worth just replacing it. And that's that one done. Next one is this pop up waste. You put it in, well, pop up all down. So it's this bit that's gone. You can just replace that. I'll show you how to get it out. Yeah, what we got to do? Little screw it. That's it. So you can get replacements. See? What we got to do is replace that bit. So if you get that, screw it on. I'll put that in, it'll be fine. It's just that bit that's going to go. Get that into there. Screw it in. That should be fine now. Let's give it a try. Go get me ended. That should fill up. There you go. Yeah, you can see that's working the tree now. Perfect. Two waste them, one on the basin and one on the bath. Uh, with materials, excluding that, £100 we charge for that. And that's took us about an hour with a cup of coffee. Uh, job was in but North Birmingham, that was. Now, what you got to understand about the Midlands is um, every man needs dogs a plumber. Um, I could Google my house now and I bet you about 10 people would be gas or plumbing engineers. So competition is heavy. So, I mean, if you're in London... I mean, you wouldn't get your foot through the door for 100 quid, would you? <laughs> to be honest with you, that would be just this start of your van, then the labour on top. But that was £100 plus that. What do you think of that? Let me know in the comments. On to the next one. So, the next one is... What is it? It's a boiler service and a leak. So, let's go take a look at that. So this one's a service on the Worcester. Um, you see the pressure's on zero. Because it's a breakdown as well. It's got no pressure in the boiler. But when you get to open the filling loop... leaking from there that's why they've got the bucket there so that's going to be a new filling loop let's get the case off and uh check it out so what's the casings just two screws there's one underneath there if you look underneath there there's the other one just gonna undo that it doesn't come right out you just loosen it off right on the top on the right hand side see one screw there on the other side, there's one screw there, and that whole case will just pull forward and that'll come off. But obviously, we've got this in the way, so I'm going to have to pull it up and out that way. Let's drop this panel. One screw there. It's gone off in the past, but it don't look wet now. And inside here, well, we normally check this red gasket in this way. Check that if we get analyzer around the top here. The red gaskets on there is really, really common. Um, sometimes you find bits of it lying down here. How bad it is, all these electrons burnt out. This one don't look too bad, to be fair. So, to get the trap out, there's a little clip there. You just push that in, then you should be able to twist. What I normally like to do is pull it. Tilt them just to get it to siphon out. If that's full, you take that off, then put it in an awkward angle, you get water everywhere. I've done that, disconnect the holes. I do like to put my finger over it as well. And there we go, that's the trap out. Let's give it a clean. So, what we've got it's just two tabs on the bottom. Wow, that is full of gunk. Let's give that a wash out. That needed doing. Just give that a clean out now. Once it's all cleaned out, I'll just fill it up a little bit. So that's nice and clean now. Just so it's got some water in it, we could put that back in. 
So to get back in, down in the gap there, onto there, push the twist. You hear that? That's actually locking in. So we can get the holes back on here. Yeah, I need the two ones for that. Last of the trap all cleaned. Just to run through a few common problems that you get with the Worcesters. Uh, the flower switch adapter being there, it'll start leaking from the front here. It'll be the flower switch adapter, which is behind there. Now, if you get more towards the back, it can be the right hand block. We all know the left hand block, that is really common as well. Then we can go the fan. It is just the, the fan board that goes in them. Um, you can just get them fan boards. The fan is really common as well. Right, let's sort out of this filling loop. So what we're going to do is we can actually drain it from there. Just undo that. That's, is that a non-return valve? No, it's a non-return valve. So sometimes you get lucky. They're a non um, and just a standard valve. You can undo the loop, drain it into the bucket. But this one isn't. But we've got the filter there. Clean that out. Magnet in these is actually inside. It's a really bad design by Spyrotech. They did change it to move it to the, the outside, but the magnet's inside in these. So. We can drain it from there and we can get that out. I'm going to pump the expansion vessel, which is right at the back as well. Here we go. Now we have got um, a washing machine also on all my ears, but I forgot to bring it in. But there, there won't be that much water in there, so I'm just going to go into there. You should be able to get the new move on. That water is near enough stop now. I'm going to use Jet Blue. I mean, that tub, I think I got that off my dad when I was an apprentice. It's that old, but. You don't need a smear of it, it's just lasted years. It's probably the oldest tool I've got on my van. Right, so there is an arrow on that. But it's just an isolation valve basically, so. There we go. That's that done. Just got to tighten that up now. And these are mandy to have. That's a compression spanner. That'll fit 15 watts, that'll fit 22. I do like them to be fair. Yeah, I'm really good. So, let's just grab that for the clips. Get a spanner on. There you go. And just put the, put the loop back on. So, let me do the expansion. Undo that dust cap. Extra long holes on. Yeah, flat as a pancake. When you recharge an expansion, you can need an opening, so just gonna open that up into the bucket. And you can see there's nothing coming out once we start pumping. Let's go to zero. And start pumping, you can start pumping the water out of the expansion. Just get that. That's on one, and that's on zero. And you keep looking. There we go. That's nearly on one. There we go. It's roughly on one. Pressure's on zero. That's the expansion does what we do now. Turn the filling loop off. Get back up and put the cap on. There's our cap. Just want to do all this one handed. So, what I do, disconnect the holes. Then you want to get some leak detector. So, what you want to do is make sure that valve isn't passing, so I'll be able to leak detector. So you don't get no bubbles. And if you're happy with that, let's get your cap on. Right, let's get some pressure back in. There we go. Get 
be able to just have one and a half knock it off. There we go. So what we're going to do now, power on. We're going to do a sweep test of the burner gasket. You can probably hear the alloys in the back background firing up. It's plenty to heat cars, so I'll try and fire up for preheat. And yeah, let's get into service mild and we'll do a sweep test of the gasket. So I'll just press and hold that button there. Run with the spanner on. And it should light up, there we go. All the way down to minimum for minimum, then all the way back up to max to the maximum. Dead easy on the Worcester. Just get that in five in minimum, get the analyzer. Let's get, get up to max. So, I'm going to put it around the back here, around the gasket. So that's where you're going to get the readings from. It's going to be a good sweet test all around the back of there. I'll do a fan pressure test for the C Pro that's a girl, got a good place there. Minus 4.3, pull that 4.4. Gives it the maximum right now. We always do with the case off, just in case it needs adjustments, but we'll do a final one with the case on. I'm just gonna check that. It's looking good to be fast, smack on that is. Let's do a minimum. It's got 9.1 on the minimum. Let's we'll get the case back on, well. Then get this replaced, get the case back on. We need to put the case back on. It has like these runners. It needs, it needs to line up with that edge. Give one a pop it in, push. That's lined up. I just do the same the other side, then you tie them in. So, case is back on. Just going to do final test on oh, maximum. Make sure that's okay. Then we'll do the outer flu test. I think I said any flu test, just but it's the outer flu test. I ain't done a video, I'm doing the test one. I'm going to take the case back off, I did it. Uh, it's dead easy, just push it in, done. So yeah, it's going to do the gas rate while well, that's testing the maximum on here for us. Well, gas rate is fine. Let's have a look how the maximum is going on. Battery is dead again. Just say that is. And our last check is an FSD check, so I can see we've got a demand there off the hot tap. Pull this fired up, now we want to mimic all kit gets flame loss, so constellation off from gas, off, and just wait for the border to lock out. So that's locked out now, let's open the gas back up, reset on the bus there, just press and hold that, reset button, so it all lights up like a Christmas tree. That. You let go and all the lights come on. I think it's about five or ten seconds that you hold it there for. Not time, I'm just holding it down, let go. All the lights up to say this reset. Now we've just got to wait for it to fire back up. So we fire back up, but one thing we do like to do is a bit of FSD and just put that on the isolation valve because we haven't disturbed it. It's the only place we can get a leak now. There we go. And because it's a vertical flu, let's go and check Screws, brackets, another bracket, screws. I'm happy with that. We've got a uh, Baxi Geotech, uh, it's losing pressure. Uh, it's got no pressure in it at the moment, but it's going to be PRV and a flat expansion vessel. We've just been outside and the PRV's wet, so let's drain it down and have a look. Yeah, just come outside to the PRV and look. Wet. To the expansion vessel points, what you do is get the ignition electrode out of the way first. So there's one screw there, just on top, and there's one there. I'm just going to undo them, get that out of the way. Now, once that's out of the way, just pull that. There you go. Look at the room you got in there now. Just got that on. I'm just going to pump it up now. So I'm just going to pump the expansion vessel up now. You can see it's on nothing. So I'm just going to pump that to the gate to one. 
You can see as him pumping. The pressure on the board will start going up. You want the pressure on the board to be zero, but the pressure in there to be one. You just keep pumping until that happens. See the pressure's on half the bar. So is that. There we go, so I'm zero. And then one on there, so we can take the R's off now and just check the Schrader valve ain't leaking with some leak detector. If you've got a leak detector, I'm just gonna put a bit on there, just to make sure that's not passive. That's fine. We can get all that back together now. There we go, so we're back together, all done. So that's an easy way to make access to that point there, just to swivel that out of the way. Let's get that POV here, so I'll start. So I'm going to get the pee over here. Yeah, that out of the way then. Yeah, that's it out of the way. Just underneath there is an Allen key. You need to get your Allen key on the grub screw. And undo that. Just like that. Really awkward to do. Especially one handed when you're trying to record. Get a few turns on that, and that should pull out. Tell some bunch about it. Pull it out. Right, so I've got a new valve. Just going to put a bit of silicon grease. Use the pit bull to those tools. Just get a bit on there and put it around the R ring just to help it in. screw back in. This is so awkward with a fill loop underneath. I'll have to use two hands in a minute because this is it. I'll have to try and line that nut up there. My best I can. The camera is not something this. But yeah, you got to just line that nut up with the PRV and screw it. That's all done. Let's get some pressure in. So, Geotex, it's got a built in fill loop. Two leaves there. Service mark which is two click two quarter turns then back on the hot water mild. There we go. A little bit more pressure in that. So I've got that on maximum, just gonna do a couple of flue gas analyzer readings and that is job done. Always remember, get a stick on the board as well once you finish, because then the customers break down again, that'll give you a call. There you go. So what do you think? Overcharged? Not charged enough? Well, I haven't just plucked them numbers out of the air. I've actually sat down and worked out what my hourly rate and what my day rate should be. So it's easy for me now to quote jobs. Now, if you want me to share that with you, let me know in the comments and I can do a video explaining how to work out your hourly rate and your day rate. Now, thanks to everyone that subscribed so far. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Now, we're near enough halfway point of our subscription goal. And I said at a thousand, I'll do a giveaway. I'm still going to do that. So make sure you subscribe. And if there's any ideas for the giveaway, let me know in the comments. Until next one, have a good one.